you guys are here today. I hope you enjoy yourself and learn a lot about Shijo. My name is Miss Jorgensen. Uh, most students call me Miss J. It's easier. So if you need anything, just raise your hand, let me know. Say, hey, Miss J, I have a question. Um, we want to make sure that you're understanding and having fun. Okay, so Shijo, Korean form of poetry. Let's start, though, by talking about what is poetry. Do we know? Yeah, yeah. Zach. Um, it's a type of poem. Yeah, what, what does that mean, a poem? Like, you're right about a um, poem. is like, you're, you're right about your feelings. Very good. So a lot of times poems are about feelings. What can you add, Evelyn? Um, so they could be like describing something, like uh, a fur on a, like the fur on a squirrel, or like uh, how beautiful the sun is today. Very good. So we've got emotion. We also have a lot of specific description. When you were saying the fur on the squirrel, right, I was imagining that. And that's what a lot of poems do. They allow us to visualize or see what the author is writing about. What else, Leela? When you write a poem, it gives you like a chance to express yourself and other things like that you like and stuff. So it kind of lets you be free with what you with what your thoughts are. Right, so it's you expressing yourself, and then when someone else reads their poem, they get to relate to you, right? And they get to figure out, oh, that's how Lila was feeling, and it allows us as human beings to connect with each other. What else, Ina? Um, it's kind of like um, a form of writing. It's like a story, except it's all packed up in like a couple of sentences. Perfect. So a story, it's longer, right? It has pages yeah. and pages and pages, and a poem, just like you're saying, is really short and yeah, compact. Usually like a paragraph. Very good, yeah, it'll look like a really short paragraph. Awesome. So we're gonna be learning about this form of poetry. It's called Shijo. It's typed S-I-J-O, but when we say it, we say Shijo. Can we practice saying that? Shijo. Good, let's do it once more. Shijo. Very good, all right. So Shijo, we were talking about how poems, they're like these little tight, short groups of words. When you're writing a Shijo, you can either write your Shijo in three lines or in six lines. Today, we're just going to talk about the three-line form. So you're going to write a poem that is three lines long. In this three-line Shijo, you want to think that Shijos were traditionally meant to be songs. So if you're writing a shijo and it's supposed to be a song, what does that mean to you? What do songs do? Yeah, Patrick. They make music. Very good. So uh, how does that make you feel when you hear the music? Good. Good. So it could be a positive emotion. What else, Evelyn? They sort of have like a rhythm. Very good. So all songs have a beat or a rhythm. It's the same with your shijo, right? You're going to feel the words going back and forth, pittering and pattering. What else, Ina? Um, also, um, um, you also get to like, feel what the artist um, was trying to tell you in the music. Right, so I think that reminds me of what Lila was saying before about poems, right? They express an emotion and then we are allowed to feel that emotion through the poetry. It's the same in the song, right? Uh, an artist portrays a, a particular emotion and then we can feel it when we listen to the song. So when you're writing your shijo, think about how is it a poem and how is it also a song? We're thinking about emotions, feelings, stories, and like Evelyn was saying, beat or pattern of the words. So total, you've got your three line shijo. All three lines combined, you're going to have 44, 45, or 46 syllables. You're going to break that down then in each line, and each line of this shijo is going to have either 14, it's an average of 14 to 16 syllables. But what is a syllable? Justin, you know? What's a syllable? There are things you, um, it's hard. It's definitely hard, yeah. What's a syllable? What's a syllable? Yeah, Evelyn, you know? Um, so it's like the beat in a word. It's like butterfly would have three syllables. Butterfly. Yes. How, how do you know that? Um, because it's like, it has like. It's a long word. It has like three, um. 
vowel sounds. Yeah, it's it's how the word is broken up by sounds. And a lot of times, I saw you like counting out on your finger, butterfly, right? Sometimes your teachers might have you clap when you count out syllables. Yeah. Butterfly, we done that? Yeah. Um, another technique I know of is you can put your hand underneath your chin, and then anytime your chin touches your hand, that's a syllable. So let's try the word radio. Ready? Radio. How many syllables? Three. Three, exactly, yeah. So we're going to be counting out in each line a specific number of syllables. And we can use the strategy of counting on our fingers, we could clap to find out the syllables, or you could put your hand under your chin and sort of feel how many times your chin touches your, your hand. So each line of your shijo, and there's three lines, are going to have between 14 and 16 syllables. Total in your poem, 44, 45, or 46 syllables. So what do we think? Are they going to be long, short? Long. Right, each line is going to be long, right? But it's only three lines. What questions do we have? None so far? So we've got our three-line shijo. Each line has 14 to 16 syllables. Then, on top of that, each line has a particular purpose. So the first line of your shijo is going to introduce your poem. What is it going to be about? Who are your characters? Where is your shijo taking place? Right? It could take place today. It could take place in the 1800s. It could take place in the future. It could take place in a city, in a made-up world. It could take place at your home. Right? It's up to you, but that first line is going to introduce us to what's happening in your poem. Think of characters, setting, what's happening, and to whom. The next line, you're going to develop your story. You're going to really start to get into what's happening. Right? There's going to be some action. There's going to be some tension. Uh, you're going to develop that story more in the second line. And then finally, in the very last line, you're going to have some sort of twist, and then your ending, or your conclusion. One of the things that I think makes Shijo exciting and different is the twist. Every Shijo will have a twist in that third line. How do we define a twist? Yeah, Ina? Um, like, let's say your, like, um, usual was like, uh, like positive in the beginning and then the twist will make it like, Negative. Very good. So it could be a flip. Yeah. Your shijo is going one direction, then all of a sudden, bam, we're going a different direction. It's all positive, all positive, and then shh, negative. Yeah, what else? You're going to add something else? Yeah, and also um, like a conflict in a story. Good. The twist could be a conflict. Are you thinking of a particular one in your head? Hmm. I don't know. Like, maybe a horse kicked you on the face. Yes, and then what would the twist be? Or is the twist that he kicked you? One, then you like. Um, fall on the principal. Sure, good. Okay, so uh, something's happening, the horse kicks you, and then the twist would be what happens afterward. Maybe you yeah. fall on the principal. Very unexpected. Lila, what else? It might be like some kind of revelation. Yeah, what do you mean? Like, um, maybe there's, like, maybe in your shijo there's a, um, a, like a mystery that you've got to solve, and then at the very end, the twist is that, like, um, like, um, the ending to the big mystery and solve it, and it's just really just, like, um, a little thing. Yeah, good. Patrick, what else? Usually a twist is some sort of a problem. Yeah, a problem that's solved or a problem that's unexpected, some, some sort of tension there. Good. Are we thinking other things for the twist? Did I see your hand, Evelyn? Yeah, so, like, um, it could, like, in the middle, like, something could have, like, happened that was bad, and then the twist could be like that a good thing happened. Yes. And then the ending, so. Awesome. Very good. So that first line of your shijo, introduce your topic. What's happening? Give your reader an idea of where this is taking place and what your characters are. Line two, develop it a little bit more. Give them some more details. Line three, twist, and then the conclusion. So let's review. What do we know about the shijo? Patrick? Each line is about 14 to 16 syllables. Any 
in each line. Good. What else do we know? Justin? There are either three lines or six lines. Good. And what are we doing today? Uh, the three lines. Good. Three lines in our shijo. Good. Leela? Um, usually the total of the shijo, um, the total of symbols in a shijo is 44 to 46. Awesome. My gosh, you guys are impressing me so much. Were you adding something else, Leela? Uh, no. Oh, no. Patrick? The first line is introducing the topic. Good. Line one. Intro. What's line two? Good, develop it. And line three? Twist, twist and conclusion. Oh gosh, you guys are brilliant. Good, twist and conclusion. What else? Uh, yeah, Ina? It's a Korean type of Korean. Very good, this is from Korea. And what else, Evelyn? It's pronounced shi jo. Good, shi jo. You know how it's spelled? S-I-J-O. Very good. Patrick, what else? Very good. They are meant to be songs. And we were talking about what that meant. Do you remember? Yep. It was like a lot emotional. Good. It's emotional. It shares some sort of emotion. What else? Yep. It's a Korean poem. Very good. It's a poem. So we're sharing a story. Something's going to happen. And then you were saying, Evelyn, if it's a song, it has? Uh, rhythm. Very good. Rhythm or beat to the words. Very good, you guys. This is awesome.